In this video, let's talk about the latest macOS Sonoma 14.3.1 on unsupported Macs. So in this video, I'd like to give you an overview how to update to the latest macOS Sonoma 14.3.1, if there is a new open core version needed, if there are any hiccups, and how does 14.3.1 run on all the different kind of old unsupported Macs. I'd like to talk a little bit about KDK, the kernel debug kit. Do you need a new one? Do you need to download and install it up front? And at the end of the video, I'd like to talk a little bit about installing macOS beta versions with open core on unsupported Macs. So first, the new macOS 14.3.1 is just a security update for Sonoma and I tested it on some more than I just got here on my desk, some more unsupported Macs, and I just did with most of the Macs the regular update method. There is one speciality with the Mac Pro cheese grater, so the Mac Pro 4.1 or 5.1, when it has finished updating and is back at the Mac OS due to the missing root patches, there's no Wi-Fi and there's no Bluetooth. So the wireless keyboard and mouse doesn't work and you have to plug in a wired keyboard and mouse and careful, you need a USB 2.0 hub. Either you have a keyboard that already has USB ports in it, so an integrated USB hub like the Apple keyboard here, or you just plug a hub between the Mac and the keyboard and mouse so that it activates the USB 2.0 controller, which is still working because the USB 1.1 controller that would basically control mouse and keyboard is not working until you root patched it. Other than that, the Mac Pro 2013 has no problem with that. So the Bluetooth wireless mouse and keyboard works with the update. The MacBooks just work fine, but all of them need a new root patch after updating. But when the Mac boots up after the update without the root patch, the OpenCore Legacy Patcher will detect that and will ask you if you'd like to install the root patch again. And here comes the second part. Um, a lot of people discuss on my Discord server. And if you haven't yet, first I would recommend you subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss new videos. And second, you join our Discord community on my Discord server. There are nearly 1,500 members already discussing all kinds of problems with unsupported Macs. And there, there were a lot of questions um, about the KDK, the kernel debug kit that is required, but only for some unsupported Macs. And just to make it clear again, and for those who are watching the first of my videos here, the KDK is a kernel debug kit that the OpenCore Legacy Patcher needs to install graphic drivers, but mostly for AMD graphic cards. For instance, the MacBook Pro 2012 here has an integrated Intel graphic card and an NVIDIA graphics card. No KDK required. The MacBook Pro 2015 here only has integrated graphics. No KDK required. But of course, the Mac Pro 2012 here has an upgraded AMD RX 580 graphics card. It does need the KDK. Same with the Mac Pro 2012. 13 who has two AMD Fire Pro graphic cards that there is no alternative for that that also requires a KDK. But as soon as you update regularly, either if you go into the system settings and start update or you download the installer and start it in macOS, OpenCore Legacy Patcher will detect that you're updating and then just pops up and says, okay, I see you're updating, I just download the corresponding KDK so that after the update, after the reboot, when the root patch is broken and there is no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever, OpenCore Legacy Patcher can just install the root patch to enable graphic acceleration 
with the corresponding KDK. For macOS 14.3.1, the corresponding KDK is 23D60. The link is also down in the video description where you can just download it directly and install it manually up front. But basically, the OpenCore Legacy Patch Up will take care of that. What if you are going with the USB drive method? It might hang during update. And that is about one third of the progress bar. If that happens to you, just reboot and in the Open Core Legacy Patcher menu, keep Shift pressed when you select Macro Sonoma so that activates safe mode. And then after one third, the progress bar should start with one, two, three, four, five percent, and it should continue finishing the install. So what's the best method to update if you are already running an unsupported macOS? I recommend just update via system settings because, and that's the next question answered, you don't need a new version of the open core legacy patcher. Still version 1.3.0 is valid for macOS 14.3.1. So there's no update of the open core legacy patcher needed. Just do the update as if with any supported Mac. And then you will see there is no background picture when it boots up because of the broken root patch. The open core legacy patcher will ask, apply the root patch, one more reboot and you're good to go. I just tested all the unsupported Macs here um, and I didn't find any flaws with macOS 14.3.1 that has not already been with macOS Sonoma the whole time. For instance, with the Mac Pro 2013, with that very old graphic cards that you cannot upgrade, you have still missing transparency with the text in Maps. So either in the Maps app or in the Weather app map, precipitation map, or in any map, uh, there is a transparency missing with the text boxes. And the iMac 2011 has no map features at all. That's also a known flaw because the map kit requires a metal capable graphics card. So again, I don't recommend macOS Ventura or Sonoma on unsupported Macs older than 2012. The MacBook Pro 2012 works fine, there's no problem at all, everything's working and all newer Macs do so as well. Now let's talk about the last part that I mentioned, installing beta versions of macOS Sonoma on unsupported Macs. There is already so much reports that macOS 14.4 beta breaks nearly all root patches with the Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.3. So if you try the beta, you're losing graphic acceleration, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the FaceTime camera, and so much more that it's very not recommended to install any beta version on unsupported Macs. If you have a Mac and you would like to contribute to the developers, you can do that. You can just give them feedback. And for instance, the link is also down in the video description if you go to the GitHub repository of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher and you go to the change log file. You can see what the developers are preparing for the next OpenCore Legacy Patcher version, which would be 1.4.0 corresponding to macOS 14.4. But they are not finished yet. They are still on the open core version 097, despite there's 098 released a few days ago already in preparation for macOS 14.4. So my guess is that the open core legacy patcher 140 that will be released soon with 14.4 will have some more updates needed. And so switch off all automatic updates on your unsupported Mac, wait, and that's the reason why you should subscribe my channel, wait until 
I give you a thumbs up or any other YouTuber that does something like that, like Mr. Macintosh or the Definite Mac Pro Upgrade, when they give you thumbs up that it's safe to update to macOS 14.4 and most definitely you will need a new Open Core Legacy patcher version. But give me some time please, some days uh, when the new version is released because I like to really thoroughly test it via USB, via update method, via the installer, via a fresh install and so on on all my different unsupported Macs to give you a good understanding if there are any Mac models that you maybe should not update yet or should not update at all or if it's safe to update. Other than that, I wish you a nice week. We're all waiting for macOS 14.4 and here on my channel there are a lot of other uh, videos that you can go through to uh, explore macOS and unsupported Macs. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye bye.